failure that wants to come your way, tell him I cannot be you, I cannot be a failure. I cannot be a burden, I cannot be a victim. I cannot be defeated, no matter the situation, I cannot be resisted. I cannot be frustrated. I cannot be dejected. Go ahead and repeat this song to yourself. You cannot be a failure. You cannot be a consign. You cannot be a burden. Come on. You cannot be a victim. Come on now. You cannot be defeated. Come on, Sha. You cannot be resisted. You cannot be frustrated. You cannot be dejected. This is the restored woman. I welcome you once again to the platform of the restored woman. And we thank God for his mercies and his continual love for us. We are not taking it for granted. So once again, welcome this evening. I want to thank God for your life. And I want to thank God for the great things he's doing for you. And I know that God's plans for you are all wonderful. The Bible says, I know the plans I have for you. They are plans of good and not of evil to give you an expected end. And I know the Lord is going to give you an expected end in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Once again, this is the restored woman. And last time we were here, we looked at the life of Ruth. We saw how that woman amongst other things was a woman of strength a woman who had so much going for her but we saw how because of her pain and bitterness she couldn't see all that God has for us in this platform we are looking at what God will have us do with the pains and and the situations and challenges of our life I want to remind you very clearly that in this life there are so many challenges in this life, you cannot avoid it. No matter how much you pray, no matter how much you fast, no matter how holy you are, no matter how righteous we are, because we have been taught that once you live right, you do good things, that you won't be, you won't find some, you know, some challenges in your life. But that is not true. That is a lie that I've made some people miserable, made some people angry at God. It has made some people begin to wonder why their life turned out like this. But if you start out having this understanding that life has its own share of pain that it must give to everyone that comes on earth. It will give you the courage that in spite of what you see, the Lord has made provision to make us a conqueror, to make us more than conquerors. Jesus told us, do not be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. He knows we are going to face so many challenges, but we have laid down principles from the word of God that is there to help us to live victoriously. And Jesus told us, he said, he that over Come it shall inherit all things. There are promises given to us here on earth because God expects us to keep on overcoming, to keep on winning. And if you have gone through some things that you have hit some hard places in life and you are wondering why, what is happening, what have I done different? You know, there are some people that believe that once something bad happens to you, it's because of one thing or the other. Remember, Jesus was asked when they saw a man that was born blind, Jesus Jesus was asked by his disciples, who sinned? Yes, sin brings afflictions, brings calamities, but in the overall analysis, you will discover something. Jesus said, neither did this man or his parents or his mother or his father, no, 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 but that the works of God will be made manifest. We are living in a world where so many things, so many things are the, are the result of the consequences of what we have done, I tell you. But you know what? No matter what it is, God expects us to know that his love never fails. God bless you, Galaxy Event. You said more blessings, more blessings to you. Some people are joining us live. Paul. Man, God bless you. You said yes, so yes. And Samuel Ado, I can see you. Good evening. Thank you so much. Good evening to you too. I welcome you. Ah, my husband is there. Hallelujah. I'm missing you, daddy. <laughs> yeah, you are joining us live. Thank you so much. You know, we are we are we have been handling the the woman uh, Naomi. And I want to continue as I read the book of Ruth, chapter one. 
verse 9, it says, The Lord grant you that you may find rest, each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them. And they lifted up their voice and wept. It was a moment of sorrow. It was a moment of lament, mourning. He said, the Lord grant you that you may find rest. That was the prayer of Naomi. Today we are looking at this verse and seeing what that woman was into at that time. We saw her praying for her two daughters-in-law. She was praying for them and for their future, pray, grant, asking the Lord to grant them rest, for them to find rest. He said, each of you in the house of her husband. She was already praying for their future husband, having been widowed, and she being their, their previous mother-in-law. You know, she, she couldn't see far. At this point, they have prepared to leave and go back but on the way, she changed her mind. The Bible says they rose up to go and follow her to enter the land of Israel. But on the way, she began to persuade them to go back. She was even praying for them. She was telling them they should find rest in their husband's houses. He said then she kissed them and they began to cry. The Bible said they lifted up their voice and they were weeping. Naomi was a woman. I saw in her what some other gracious women couldn't do. We have our mothers in the scriptures, the women we have been emulating their lives. We saw our mother, Mommy Sarah, the wife of Abraham. We saw Mommy Rebecca, the wife of Isaac. We saw Mommy Rachel. We saw Mommy Leah. These are godly women we saw in the scriptures. But there is something about mommy Naomi that is so outstanding that I didn't see in any of these women. Last time I mentioned Rebecca. Rebecca was the mother of Jacob and Esau. We saw her complaining about her own daughters-in-law. Two daughters-in-law just like this woman had daughters-in-law too. She was complaining because these girls, we are coming from a, a nation that does not fear God. Just like these daughters that were mentioned here in Opa and Ruth. But we saw something extraordinary about this woman, Naomi. Yes, they have some similarities because these girls also came from a hidden nation. They don't fear the Lord God. They don't have the laws of God. But we saw how this woman was able to influence her daughters-in-law. Yes, she was seeing herself as a failure. There is a woman out there I want to let you know that it's time for you to stop looking at that, that thing you thought that is denied you and begin to look at something that you have that you don't even recognize. Because she couldn't recognize what she had, it cost her something. I told us the last time that she, because of her myopic state and because of her bitterness and her pain, she denied us from seeing the fruit that could have come from Opa. Opa, the other daughter-in-law, had to go back because she persuaded her to go back. Because of her pain, she could not see far. She was praying for them and telling them to go the way you have treated me and those that died, my husband and my sons, and the way you handled me, the Lord bless you as you go. You know, she could not see that in that emptiness there is a blessing. She could not see that in that emptiness there is something that God can make out of it. I thank God for Ruth who refused to let go. As far as Ruth is concerned, she has made up her mind whether dead or alive. I have seen something in this woman I didn't see in my mother. I can't let go. She told her, go back to your mother's house. The woman was like, how am I going back to my mother's house when I found in you something I did not see in my mother? I'm praying for a woman who could not see beyond what her immediate situation is. I'm praying for you that God will open your eyes for you to see some virtue in what you thought is emptiness. Because as long as you keep on seeing emptiness, you will not be able to take that pain and turn it into a wonder. 
If you can't see the miracle that God did through that pain, you survived it even though you have some scars to show for it, yet God expects you to rise up from the ashes of that pain and begin to produce something that will bring healing, that will make people to praise the name of the Lord because of you. Oh, we were told in the book of Ruth how people everywhere were talking about this daughter Ruth. She was a virtuous girl. She was a decent woman. She was not going around with men even though she was a widow and men may be making passes at her. She remained comfortably with her mother-in-law not knowing what the future holds for her until the mother-in-law who has in her the future of this girl because she began to strategize we saw her begin to to come alive with her ideas. We saw her begin to advise her and that was where her breakthrough came. You know the place that she was casting them away. We saw how she was praying for them, insisting for them to go back. But that same person she was throwing away was the same person through whom her blessing came. There is somebody the Lord is speaking to today. The Lord is telling you that even though you have been emptied, oh my God, even though you have been in that marriage, you know my you know, the Bible told us that for 10 years they were married. Ruth and Naomi, Ruth and Opa were married. The Bible said for 10 years after Elimelech, the, the father-in-law died, the husband, that is uh, Marlon and Chilion, they, they married these two ladies and they were living with them for 10 years and there was no conception. I don't know how you have been in your marriage. You have not conceived and years have gone. The Bible recorded for 10 full years there was no conception. But you know what happened? When God turned it around, Immediately she got married to Boaz. She conceived immediately. The Bible said God gave her conception. You know, maybe probably Naomi was thinking, not nothing gonna happen. They never conceived for the ten years. They would live with my sons. I can't see anything further. I don't know what you are seeing in a place you thought is empty, in a place you think there's nothing good can come out of it. God has sent us to let you know that He is not over yet. It is not yet over with you. you you have recorded pains. You have recorded barriers and funerals. But I'm here to let you know that God Almighty is not finished with you. You may look at your life and see nothing else coming out of it. But the Lord sent us to let you know it's not yet over. Don't pack your bags yet. The Bible says they lifted up their voice and they wept. What a weeping. I can imagine the scenario. Carrying their bags, maybe hanging the bag at the back or keeping it by the side and weeping. The Bible said they lifted up their voice and wept. I don't know the areas you have been weeping because of the separations, because of the bitterness, because of the betrayers, because you are even thinking that God has witnessed against you. The Bible says that Naomi was saying the Lord has witnessed against me. I went out full. I came out empty. I came back empty. He, she was busy lamenting do not call me no, Naomi anymore call me Mara meanwhile Naomi means pleasant pleasant I believe that woman was a pleasant woman we saw the rub off on her daughter's in-law the daughter's in-law we are not bitter of course you and I know what happens among daughters in-laws and mothers in-law you know some people will say I'll prefer marrying a man whose mother is dead oh my god a woman that conceived, imagine somebody wishing that you that conceived, you have burned your child, you gave back to your sons, and then they are getting married, and somebody said, I don't want her to enjoy her grandchildren. Some girls will tell you they don't want to get married to a, a man whose mother is still alive. Why? Because of what we see in this generation. It started from the time of the Bible. We saw how, how, how Rebecca was mourning because she was like, I can't endure these girls anymore. Oh, they say, what good is my life with? Because there was frustration. You can hear it from her comments. But we saw how this woman was able to influence this daughter so much, they don't even want to leave her. 
Now for you, your own may not be between the daughter-in-law and the mother-in-law. Your own may not be the death of a husband. Your own may not be the death of a son. Your own may be the death of a, a loving relationship with your husband. He is still alive, but he's as if he is dead because those good things you, you had when you started is no more there. You have conducted burial over that marriage. You have conducted burial over that business. You are thinking, what is, what is the good of these all things? But I want to let you know that God is about to give you beauty in the places where you have only harvested ashes. The places where you have given up. This is a call for a woman. I want to let you know if you are a woman, there is something about you that is so unique that can affect somebody else. You may look at someone else and admire what it, it is that they are doing that you cannot do. I tell you that all of us cannot do the same thing. I may know how to do this when I may not know how to do this other one well. That place I cannot do it well may be the place you can do it well. And don't allow the lies of the devil to tell you because you could not do what this other woman is doing does, has made you not to be effective. I want to let you know that there is something about you and don't allow the lies of the enemy to relegate you to the background, to make you look down on yourself, to make you think that there is nothing that can come out of you. I want to let you know that God sent us to tell you, woman, there is something about you that God wants to restore. It has been battered. It has been shattered. It has looked as if nothing is going to come out of it anymore. But praise the Lord. This is the Restored Woman platform and God is the God of restoration. He has given us this mandate to tell every female, every woman, everyone who has felt that there is something inferior about them. God has sent us to let you know that there is something in you that he is interested in. He did it in the life of Naomi. Now think about this. Naomi couldn't see far in that situation, but God never abandoned her. God blessed her through the insistence of her daughter-in-law, Ruth. Permit me to call her her student or her protege. She is someone that was influenced by her. And she couldn't let her go. Imagine maybe she was even returning back to the land of Israel to just die. Since death have not come to take her, let her kukuma return home and remain there until death comes. Who will be fetching water for her? Who will be bringing food for her? Remember how Ruth will go out there to work for two of them and come back and feed her. She will even encounter some food when she goes to work. We saw how she brought back some of the food that she, she was given in the place, the field where she went to work. She returned, she packaged some and brought it back home and gave to her. Who could have taken care of her? She didn't even see it. I don't know what you are not seeing, but God wants you to look again so that you don't repeat the re mistake that Naomi repeated. Naomi was a gracious woman that did what most women could not do. I want God to give me that kind of grace. We are no matter is a mother-in-law or a daughter-in-law or a son-in-law, no matter what it is in relations with people, to be so gracious to pour out this blessing so that as you relate with people, you are able to make them, to make the world, to make the relationship, to make people that encounter a better habitable place instead of making people to be stiff, antagonistic, this woman gave them a reason to be pleasant. And that is her name, Naomi. It means pleasant. And she was changing it to Mara. Thank God when women gathered together and began to celebrate her. Say, who is like your daughter-in-law? She has given you a son that is better than sons. She has given you something you thought you have lost long ago. That woman began to celebrate again. I want to let you know that you can still celebrate again. That you don't know, it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter what has happened to you. We serve a God of miracles. We serve a God of restorations. We serve a God who can heal you in your battered state. There's a woman that has been betrayed by her husband. You have been betrayed and the hurt is so much. You are so pained. God is saying, hand over that pain to me. God is saying, I want to handle it. The Lord is saying, give me that pain. The Lord is saying, you cannot continue like that in that pain. 
I tell you, you cannot continue like that. He wants you to hand over. I don't know the areas, anybody hearing me right now, I don't know the areas you are hurting, the areas, you know, you are managing to just leave it. He said, mm, who can be trusted these days? I tell you, you can depend on God and allow God to use that hurt that makes you not to trust anybody anymore. He can take it and turn it into a miracle. And the same places where you have seen that you are bitter is the same place where God wants to give you a miracle. We are going to pray. We are going to say, Father, help me to see what I could not see. We saw her praying for the people who are supposed to be a succor to her, praying a prayer of release for them. Meanwhile, she's supposed to embrace them and they're supposed to continue going together. She wanted, to, I believe that woman was planning to go back to Israel and die. She was planning to just go and just keep on mourning until her death comes. But God said, I have so much things for her. God said, I have so many things. And he's not finished with her. I don't know what you are looking at. I am trusting God to give you another perspective in that situation. I am trusting God to give you another view in that situation. You know, sometimes we are praying and praying and asking God to change that situation. We fast and pray. We are making demands on God. Father, this thing should change. Father, you are praying and you are wondering why God seems not to be answering that prayer. He may not want to deliver you from there. He wants you to go through it and prove him faithful so that you will see him securing you. You will see God's faithfulness in the midst of the pain. And at the end of the day, he will give you laughter again. He will give you joy again. The Bible says she gave birth to the baby. The baby was called Obed. He became the father of Jesse. Jesse is the father. He was the father of David, the king of Israel. A king is hidden in that pain. Someone that be celebrated is hidden in that your pain. Please don't deny us in this generation what the pain God will use to bring healing to you. Praise the name of Jesus. Can we pray right now? I want us to pray and begin to talk to God about that hurt. I tell you that if you were talking to Naomi at that time when she did not know what God is going to do, it would be very difficult. Just like it might be difficult talking to you right now regarding how God is going to turn that situation. I see a troubled child, a child that has been causing you pain as a mother. Oh, Lord Jesus. And you are wondering what can come out of this, what can come out of this. You are believing God and praying and that child has only grown worse to you. She is growing worse, but no, he is touching all the wrong places and knowing that those places cannot give him joy. He has tried cocaine, he has tried women, he has tried all manner of things. Now he is only ripe for, to be harvested for Jesus. You are giving up on that child. Meanwhile, that child is ripe for the harvest. And I want you to pray again. I want you to look in that situation again. I want you to trust God again and believe God that God is going to turn it around. Go ahead and begin to pour that pain to the Lord. You can carry it. I tell you, we are not wired to carry our burdens. We are wired to lay it down at the feet of Jesus. That is why he said, what needless things we bear? That him, that old him, all because we do not carry everything to the Lord in prayer. I tell you, you can carry these things to the Lord in prayer and you will have your peace. Go ahead and speak to the Lord. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, thank you for the pains of my failures Thank you for the disappointment, the things I've complained about, the tears I've shed in the secret. I wake up in the night and I'll begin to think about my life. Father, I hand them over to you. I don't know what is going to come out of this marriage. I don't know what is going to come out of this relationship. I don't know what is going to come out of this pain I'm in, but I hand it over to you. If you can do anything, just like you did in the life of Naomi. Father, do it in my own life. Go ahead and talk to God in that line. Go ahead and commit it to him. Pour out your, if you want to shed tears, go ahead. It's permitted. You can shed tears and tell God how you are feeling. But I want to let you know that after those tears and those crying, the Bible said they lifted up their voice and wept. You're not going to end there. You are going to trust God to take you by the hand and lead you through the path of restoration. And that devil will watch you begin to gain ground in the places he thought that is over with you. He thought it's over for you. He thought he has had the final say, but God is saying, I've not even started. Oh, our time is running so much. We just have 
five minutes to go, but I want to pray for a woman who wants to say this healthing is too much. I need the healing of God. I want to pray for healing for you right now. Wherever you are, just have, just, just open your heart and trust the Lord. You can kneel down by the side of your bed or by the chair, your sofa where you are seated. If you are there, you can bow your head. Whatever you do, just begin to acknowledge God and say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I hand over this pain to you. I need healing. Oh Lord, heal me in the name of Jesus. I want to pray for you right now. Before I pray, I want to pray for another woman who is not at peace with God, who is there drinking. You are there doing something some things that you know is a sin. You are there trying to drown your pain. You are there drowning your pain. You think there's nothing else you can do because you have repeatedly fallen into immorality, both with man and woman. You know what I'm talking about? You don't need to mention it, but God is here to take it away. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I want you to forgive me. I want you to heal me. I want you to accept me as your own child. Write my name in the book of life. And today I receive the grace to live as your child. Thank you, Father, for accepting me in Jesus' name. I want to pray for every woman, those that just made peace with God, and those that have been hurting. I pray right now for the power of God to penetrate into your life, giving you healing. Some of you need physical healing. I pray the healing of God will flow right now. God didn't send us empty. He sent us and empowered us with his word. He told us and gave us the command to declare. And as we declare, chains shall be broken. So right now, I declare over your life, woman, hearing me, every chain of death, darkness, every chain of affliction, every chain of the enemy binding your mind and you think you're a failure, you think there's nothing else going to come out, I declare the lies of that devil is broken in your life right now in the name of Jesus. I declare you are set free from the chains of reluctancy. I declare you rise up and begin to do something right now in the name of Jesus. I pray for healing for a woman that is sick right now. You are sick. You don't know what you can call it. You have been taking medications. It has been persistent right now. The power of God is healing you. Hallelujah. I can see healing is going on right now. Wherever you are, believe God for your own healing and it is so in the name of Jesus. I rebuke every demon sent on assignment in your life to keep on bringing frustration. I declare that frustration is over in the name of Jesus. You are set free. You are restored in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Till I come your way again. This is Pastor Joy, Restored Woman. And I want to hear from you through our WhatsApp. Our YouTube is there. Our Facebook is there. You can visit us. And I know your life can never remain the same again. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.